I have been wanting to have this woman on for years, and I'm so excited to have her here for the very first time. You may have seen her on Comedy Central or Two Dope Queens or Comedy Central's new incredible com um, stand-up special, The New Negroes. Please welcome Shalewa Sharp. <laughs> I, um, I guess tonight I'm, I'm going to talk to you about um, uh, uniforms and um, personal uniforms. And uh, we're just going to go through the history of my uniforms and see if we can, like, nail one. You know what I mean? Because I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I feel like I, I'm supposed to have figured it out by now. <laughs> I'm late 40s, I should, have, I should have had this lined up. You know what I mean? I don't have the kids, I don't have the husband, I don't have the mortgage, but I should have had the uniform. <laughs> I should have had that. Um, so we're just gonna go back in time and see where, where did I go wrong? Why, why does it take me so long to get dressed? <laughs> um, we start with uh, baby. Well, I seem to be naked a lot, so. Um, we move on to toddler and preschool. My mother made a lot of clothes for me. And now, <laughs> now we move on to uh, elementary school. Here's where it gets interesting. I went to a private elementary school for two years while I was um, in New York. I was born in Brooklyn, and I grew up in Flatbush until I was eight. Okay. I didn't see any West Indian people here, but I'm sure you're here. <laughs> because that's what Splatbush is to me. I don't know what Prospect Leopard's Garden is. Um, <laughs> but I know my memories. And um, so I, my parents put me in a, in a private school. Now this was, um, this was in the 70s, uh, the pro-black 70s. Um, I don't know if any of you experienced the pro-black 70s, but that's, again, what the 70s were to me. So I went to a private school called Wayusi Shule, which is Swahili for black school. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the art program wasn't great, but uh, so we had uniforms. It's a private school. We had uniforms. Um, we learned Swahili. Uh, all black. We were, they were just making little revolutionaries out of us. Like snack time was a small cup of sage tea and a piece of sugar cane. Uh, <laughs> and they just had us running around in a fenced in area in Brook. I, I know we looked uh, a little, anywho. Um, so that's, uh, that was the actual uniform for me on top of whatever my mother made. Um, I had forgotten that I had school uniforms until a few years ago when I, um, I found myself at one of the um, marches that happened after the Staten Island Brain Trust decided that the police who killed Eric Garner didn't do it. Um, and I just took to the street. I didn't know where I was going, but I followed everyone else and we ended up uh, on the floor of Grand Central screaming and I told my parents about that and my parents said, did you have on your riot reds? <laughs> what does that mean? And my mother said, you know, your red uniform that you guys wore when you went to protest. And I said, again, I need <laughs> more. And then <laughs> it unlocked that part of my brain. We had two uniforms. We had blues, daily blues, Nice little tunic pant combo. Then we had the same thing in red, and we wore those when we went to protest on Wall Street. <laughs> Our riot reds. I did. She was like, yeah, it, they, they picked red because it really made a statement when there were all the little kids there with their black fists up. I was like, I don't even, what? Uh, <laughs> So there, that's, that was a uniform that uh, I, was, I was told about later, but I completely remember now. I also got my glasses then, I was six. Um, so you know that adorable kid who can't see anything and is wearing glasses that her mom picked out that are this big? That became part of the uniform. That's what I was building on. My family moved to Atlanta when I was eight. 
to Stone Mountain, to be exact. So, like, whiplash. Um, if you don't know what Stone Mountain is, it's a large piece of granite right outside of Atlanta where the Confederate Army heroes are etched into the side. I remember no Swahili, but I can tell you the name of those Confederate Army heroes because I could see them from my bedroom window. I got issues. So... <laughs> So, uh, you know, my mother was still making clothing for me for uh, the first few years, but then I started to think on my own, and she went, oh, no. Um, so that's when the battle of the will started. First, the big argument was when I was in sixth grade, and I wanted a pair of jeans um, that had stripes on them. And my mother said, oh, no, no, we don't do jeans. And I was like, that's, you're wearing them now. What do you mean? <laughs> We don't do jeans. She was like, I know your white friends wear them every day, but we don't wear jeans every day. We're not allowed to. And I was like, when you say we, do you mean me? And she's like, yes, but I mean us as a people have to be better than that. We can't just be out here in jeans. Again, will you see Shule? So, um, so I couldn't wear jeans every day. I wore jeans maybe monthly. I had one pair I could wear monthly. And that goes a long way to explain why I can't just chill in jeans. Like, it's got to be, is there a drawstring or something? Is there something fancy? Is there a stripe up the side? I can't just do it. I got to be extra because I got to be better. Um, that's interesting, but it helps me build on my uniform. Um, when I got to, like, sixth and seventh grade, a few things changed, boobs. And so... <laughs> We had to deal with that. Also, I made the decision to be in Camp Cindy Lauper and I left the Madonna people behind. I'm so glad I didn't put money on that because I, that's the beginning of like terrible choices. How could you? I was like, but she's just wearing underwear. I mean, Cindy Lauper's putting together magic. Do you see what's happening with the eyeshadow? I picked wrong. <laughs> I picked wrong, but I was trying to do that in some way. So I got something with crinoline, and my mother was like, I don't understand what's happening here. I'll allow it, but you look crazy. And then before I could get to the door, she was like, I'm I, I, I won't allow it. Just put on the jeans. Um, so we're battling sixth and seventh grade then eighth grade. Now, where I was, there was no middle school. There was no junior high. So eighth grade started high school. So I'm 13 in a building with a bunch of 17 and 18-year-olds. I had people in my ninth grade class driving. It was <laughs> nuts. It was nuts. But that's when I got to see lots of things. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a little bit from all of it. And I'm trying to run it by my mother, who at this point was just trying to dress me like her so I could look like a 14-year-old insurance claims adjuster. <laughs> lots, lots of twister bead conversations. Um, and it wasn't working so much because I was trying to make my move into 80s alternative slight goth baggy everything. And I needed to wear all brown because I needed it to match with gold because I was going to get braces. And when I made the switch to silver braces, I was going to have to go with black because black went with silver. Do you see what's happening in here? Do you see what's happening in here? So I had to go all brown first. She was like, I don't even understand. Just a little color. I picked out a swatch and it was black. And she was like, not, not even the plaid one? I bet she never thought she'd say that. I bet she never thought she'd be begging her child to get something with an Irish coat of arms on it. <laughs> Just because it had some color that she could work with. Um, so I tried other things. I was like, I don't know, maybe riding boots? She was like, no, you are not. She was, I was like, you're right. Um, Sebagos, which are not boat shoes, but they're those other brown shoes with the curly Q things. I really thought I could do that with an REM shirt and the jeans that she was allowing. And she was like, mm, I don't know how to break this to you, but that is not your look. And I was like, but we don't know what my look is yet. She was like, I know, but I, I swear, I mean this with all the love in my heart. That is not you. <laughs> and that was much more love than the jeans thing. Like, she really was trying to work with me. Like, I don't think you're alterna prep. That's not, I'd rather you go goth. So, so I did. I went full Depeche Mode with it. Um, it was absolute Susie. She was like, you don't need to put the white makeup on. 
just do the dark eye line. I don't even know. Um, the only time that I didn't have that on is when I had to wear an actual uniform, which was my drill team uniform. I still love to dance. So uh, a couple of times a week during football season, I had to wear sequins, green and gold. Also why I cannot wear those colors together, right? None of us can wear our high school colors together ever again, right? We can't do it. it it's a little twitch. <laughs> After that, we hit the alternative 90s. What am I? Am I a raver? Mm -hmm. I like candy necklaces. I got those huge jeans, why not? Uh, am I a riot girl? I'm a little angry. I don't know if I can wear a, a full slip in the street, but I think I'm kinda angry. Um, am I grunge? It seems comfortable. But I, don't, I feel like I should lace things up a little bit more than that. I just cycled between the three things. I had um, burgundy hair that I was uh, coloring with black cherry Kool-Aid. And then I went ahead and lightened it up. And then I went Grover Blue with it. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm not, what are we doing? What are we doing? Then the late 90s hit. Because at this point, I am coming up on like 30. <laughs> and y'all got me out here in butterfly clips? What are we doing? I'm supposed to wear jeans that stop here? No. What? Low rise, man. Oh, and then they tried to make up for it by giving us mid rise. That's not the same. That's on a literal slippery slope. That's between the indention and where everything else just falls apart. It's not, it was rough. It was really rough for me for a while. So um, I went thrift store. I went vintage dresses because I'd been built like a woman since I was 12. Let's go on and put on some of these 200% polyester dresses. So I did that. I did um, Sansa Belt golf pants that split all the time. Why did I keep wearing them? Um, I, uh, I tried to be as ugly as possible. Uh, I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but that's absolutely what I was doing. I was also working in a porn store at the same time. You see what's happening here? It's a mess. Um, so I just, and then the battle with the, with the rises, no one knows what we're doing. I'm, am I supposed to pull my thong strings up or down? How am I, what are we doing? So I said, fuck it with the pants. And I wore dresses for four years, <laughs> nothing but dresses and skirts. And I was like, I think I did it. I think this is my uniform. Uh, and then I went somewhere cold and I was like, mm, no. <laughs> this only works if I stay in Atlanta, I guess. And I, I do wanna go other places. So I, um, I moved here and I just lost completely. And then, and then the 80s alt look came back. We're all doing these weird big pants and half shirts that come up to here and then hair piled different. I looked like an extra from a John Hughes movie and I've been trying to do that since I was 15. I was so happy and I think this is it. It's gonna be like a John Hughes thing, but I wear a lot of leg warmers, so it's also gonna be like a Debbie Allen and fame thing, right? <laughs> Which is another thing I've been trying to pull off, but I only just now got the confidence like, she probably didn't know how to dance in fame. I know nothing. I just, I'm like, yes, this is what we're doing. All baggy everything and a cinch in the middle so that someone will go, oh, I think she has an ass. Um, <laughs> So that's where we are now, but I think what we're learning is that I will never truly have a uniform because I wanna try it all. So I'm never going to be able to lock it down to one thing because I mean, there are so many choices and why should I just stop? Why should I just stop? I mean, I will lock it down when I'm an old lady because I already know what that uniform's gonna be. I'm gonna be the woman who wears a cloak we know her, right? She's at all the art openings. But no one's really seen her art. Like, who invited her? She's wearing a cloak and she's got a walking stick with tiger's eye on the top of it. Oh my God, I can't wait. And you know, another thing I realized is that all of this would have been taken care of if I just really loved sunflower dresses. Because those never went out of style. Those are universal and I could have worn those from the cradle to the grave. 
I'm Shalewa Sharp, guys. Thank you very much. Yum's the word. 